This interview is not brought to you by Manscaped, and until it is, I'm vowing to not trim a single hair. The balls are in your court now, Manscaped. Throughout these first 22 episodes of Podcast the Hero, some scholars have heralded my research as hard to classify as research. Others have equated it with the kind of research done by out-of-touch Facebook users who think they understand politics. While all of that might be true, my research this week has uncovered some incredible details. The name of today's guest makes several appearances throughout history. In the 14th century, a man bearing the same name led soldiers into battle as their general. Before giving up a life of spilling blood to pursue a quieter life of spilling blood uh, as a Catholic friar. <laughs> In the 17th century, a man who shared his name was a governor of Portuguese Ceylon. I, I don't know how to pronounce that. Here today, in the 21st century, a man whose name may have occurred before, but whose likeness can never be replicated, Nuno Pereira. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. That was, that was beautiful, Rory. That's true. That was, it's all true, too. You know, what, you know, for what it's worth, dude, you did a pretty good job pronouncing that Portuguese word. <laughs> well, how do you actually pronounce it? I don't know. I was too busy staring at your mustache. What did you say? <laughs> Now that is true. Though, like both of those guys were named Nuno Pereira, correct? And so you know all about this. I, I'm, I'm like aware. Yeah, I'm not like a scholar on the topic or nothing. But yeah, for but sure. But they even shared a middle name of Alvarez. Al, Al oh, yeah. My apologies. Is that your no middle problem. name as well? No, I'm Nuno Alshandre Pereira. Oh, okay. Nuno Alshandre Pereira is the is the is the famous one. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. I'm glad. That, well, I mean, how do you not know two guys that share the exact same name as you throughout history? And then Nuno Betancourt, of course. Of course. Uh, honorable mention. Yeah, we'll get I, to honestly, that. I thought we're going to get to that uh, later. In fact, Nuno wasn't a very common. We don't have to. Now. I thought it wasn't a very common name. I was only aware of the two Nunos, uh, right Nuno on. Betancourt and yourself. But when I right, googled right. it, there is a fuck ton of uh, Portuguese <laughs> football players <laughs> named Nuno. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Nuno Gomes, like, uh, yeah, uh, there's there's a few. He was probably the, the best one most recently. It's a way more common name that, uh, than I realized. I'd... Yeah, I think it's one of those things. It's like if you're Portuguese, like you're, if you grew up in a Portuguese community, you definitely have heard it. But, like, you might not have anyone in your family named Nuno. But yeah. You're certain, it's only a, like it's only a Portuguese name, though. You know what I mean? You're not going to be like, Oh, this is like my cousin. He's Welsh. His name is Nuno. You know, like that's never going to happen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, like, <laughs> no, no one's going like, oh, you know, I was thinking about a strong Portuguese name for my son. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there, you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's. There's no like regular white types out there. Just you know, throwing the name, using that name. I mean, you know? there might be now after uh, your success and Nuno Betancourt's success. I'm sure there's a couple people that are going to name some kids after Mom, you. Sick. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You get like some kids in Peterborough, you know, just <laughs> white as Christmas. Going. <laughs> Sick. So, mm. um, let's friggin' hop in. Have you met Fritzy? I, I know you. Fritz, how are you? Buddy? Good. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Um, you probably met him a couple you... years. What? Sorry. No. Nope, tell, you go what ahead. are you saying? I was just, I've seen the three of us lined up with these fucking mustaches, and it's just a good look, I think. Yeah. It's pretty nice. It's good. It's good. I'm glad they're back. Yeah. Unified front mm -hmm. here. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask you, so you and Rody both like to fish. Mm-hmm. What, what do you like most about it besides touching animals that live in their own toilet? Oh, dude, just exerting dominance, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> like, brass, I mean, when you, when you boil it all down to it, you know what I mean? Like, just, uh, I mean, nah, it's, it's just so, there's so much to it, you know what I mean? Uh, without bumming out uh, animal rights <laughs> types, you know what I mean? I, I don't want to do that. I, I, so I try to keep it kind of, uh, like, undercover a little bit so I don't get, like, blasted. Um, but I mean, fishing's great, dude. Like oh, you yeah. get out, you're away from everybody. Like you're in usually pristine areas. Sometimes I'm in some dog shit areas too, but it depends. Uh, you know what I mean? Just, uh, just being out there, you know, it's probably my favorite part. 
yeah obviously catching fish is is fun it's it's challenging but uh yeah for me it's mostly just like the you know the uh the getting there and getting let down parts <laughs> that are that are parts i i most mostly enjoy a uh thoreau quote comes to mind <laughs> he said most men fish all their lives without knowing that it wasn't the fish they were after and usually people use that to insult you <laughs> or like demean you because like oh the boys are out bonding are they it's like you think we don't yeah. know we're fucking bonding out here <laughs> <laughs> yes we know that's part of the reason why we love it <laughs> oh yeah now, I will say you have been quite a bit more successful fishing than I have. I've seen your catches. Um, I've had some decent fish. I had my best, my my personal best, just a couple weeks ago, um, and that was wild. That's one of those things, you know. I go out to a certain spot because I really like it out there, even though it's a bit of a hike and it's it's a real challenge to get to and it's a challenge to fish. I've had success out there before, you know what I mean. But I've gone out there for hours on end, just getting skunked. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like I said, getting skunked in a beautiful spot, you're still still out there, and I I always bring pr- plenty of like you know weed with me, so <laughs> yeah, I got yeah. that covered. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, sitting there like Tom Bombadil and shit, covered in fucking <laughs> seagull turds, and like just smoking weed up. Uh, anyway, that's a Lord of the Rings reference for you nerds out there. Yeah, I didn't uh, get it. <laughs> yeah, Bradagast. Maybe I used the wrong one. Uh, I don't fucking know. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, I was out there. I got there. I hiked out to the spot. Uh, I took a few casts, nothing doing. Switched on my lure. First cast, just absolutely nailed one. I was there for probably 15 minutes, dude. I had spent the better, like, probably cumulative week on that rock with shit all to show for it. And then I go out there for 15 minutes, and I come back with, like, you know, this monster fish. It just goes to show you. It's fucking, it's all luck, dude. Oh, yeah. That's a little <laughs> skill. It's knowing what to put on and take off and sure. when to do it and where well, to put it. It's what someone else said, like, you know, it's not, they're not hard to catch. They're hard to find. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Did you eat it? Oh, I ate the shit out of that fish. <laughs> I can't imagine. Well, I can only imagine two things worse than that. Yeah, you know what? Like, people talk about catch and release like it's, like, the more humane thing to do, but, like... You think about it, that's just fucking cruel. <laughs> right. Like, just it's ripping them out nice. and fucking throwing Like, I'll, I'll, I'm going to do it. And Yeah, I'm, I'm like 99% of the time I'm putting a fish back, yeah. you know what I mean? But it's, and I do so as carefully and with as much, you know, uh, you know, fingers crossed, I uh, hope you make yeah. buddy type energy as I can muster. You know what I mean? Good luck out there. Sorry about the lip piercing, pal. Yeah. yeah sorry. <laughs> sorry to like drag you out into the surface of the fucking moon or whatever it is to you. Oh, yeah. Like, now, I've never smoked okay. weed while fishing, but uh, <laughs> I imagine you would have that thought quite a bit about like, imagine if something came down into my atmosphere and fucking tore me out of it. Dude, sign me up. Yeah. You are like, dude, I'm 44, you know, dude. Like, I'm over, yeah. dude. Yeah, send down the space hook, dude. I'm, I'm biting that shit. <laughs> you just send down a space hook with like a like a hot, half a hot dog with some mustard and onion on it, dude. I'm, I'm a goner, dude, for sure. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, uh, I so I wrote this down. Um. Where do you get your pure, unadulterated joy and positivity when performing live? Can I have it? Like, I'll trade you this thing behind me that Rody made me if I could have. Is it it's, flashing? No, it's like the. I'm I don't know if the camera doesn't show. Maybe I can embiggen it. Rody made me this thing that says well, frig. All right, hold on a second. Let me see. Turn, camera. The other way. <laughs> It's just a sign that says, oh, there it is. It says frig. Oh, that's a nice frig yeah. sign, dude. I'll trade you that if you, if you give me your pure, unadulterated positivity and joy. You know, I, I tell you what, I feel like that sign in my pure, unadulterated, whatever it is, is kind of like the same, though. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I have both, no idea what you mean. Both, both here to, like, just, you know, uh, excite, excite the viewer. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's... It's a, a sight to behold. I I just have to tell I, I you. Like, I like to. You know what I found out? I'll be honest with you. I'm going to be 100% honest. I've never really talked about this ever. Um, for like the better part of two decades, 
uh, I was spent like trying to figure out like who I was like as a performer. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I, I still remember like the first like three or four tours we ever did. I, I looked at Nick more than I did the audience. You know what I mean? Like it was really difficult. Like it was just weird. You know what I mean? Not playing in your hometown to like the, you know, 120 kids that you know are going to love you and going to be there forever like or whatever and like trying to play to like 18 kids that could give a fuck or yeah. whatever. it was just really weird like psychologically yeah um and then it all kind of came to a head i think we were on like one of our first or second like european tours and it was one of those ones where like you know one of these like godfather like bands takes you out you know like a pennywise or lag wagon and so now you're playing to like you know hundreds if not thousands of kids and after one of the shows, like, w- w- like our agent buddy came up, good friend came up and was like, yeah, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Like you're playing in front of like hundreds, a thousand, twelve hundred kids here. Like, you, like make it look like you're, you're having fun. Like you're like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like embrace it. Yeah. Don't, don't like shrug your shoulders and look at your shoes and be weird. Like no one's buying that shit, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, and I was like, you know what? You're fucking, you're fucking right, dude. Like, I, I am having fun here. Why am I not like showing it? Why am I afraid to show it or whatever? Maybe I was afraid of being perceived as like corny or or not hard enough for the sound for yeah. the sound or the scene. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then I hit a certain age. I said, "Fuck all that, dude." Yeah, like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, plus I started drinking tequila instead of whiskey, smoking <laughs> more weed. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, just in general, like a little bit a little bit happier but uh and and then of course there's like you know the positive feedback people come up and be like yo you look like you're having a fucking time up there buddy and i go you know what i am and i'm glad i i'm glad i got that point across yeah yeah you know saying like because smiling like that hurts after a while (laughs) (laughs) yeah I, i think that's really good for people to hear right that it's like someone like having seen you perform as many times as i have it's like mm. you you seem like you have like a natural charisma right and a natural sort of ability to do that but hearing you say that it's something that you had to develop i think is um inspiring i think it's something that like people should hear because it's like you know, nobody has it naturally. Maybe people right. do have it naturally, but yeah. sometimes the appearance of the natural charisma isn't is just that. It's the appearance, right? It's something developed and worked on. Yeah, exactly. And like like I said, I mean, it's not like we spent forever in those VFW halls, but it seems like we did. But yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like when it when it switches over, and now you're doing headlining shows or direct support for these huge at these huge venues, the whole scale, the whole thing is like. Like you're, you're, you're completely blown out of your comfort zone. Yeah. And, uh, you know, some people, I think honestly, like, you know what I mean? Like, ouch, it's like CC DeVille is like made to be on stage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't think there was a day in CC DeVille's life where he wasn't like, yeah, baby, let's rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. I mean, there are people out there like that. But I mean, when you're talking about like our style of music or our kind of genre, like where bands like ours come from, regardless of what level of fame they achieve, Mm -hmm. we come from small, humble beginnings, you know what I mean? Basement shows and shit. Um, So it's not exactly the best place to practice your, you know, your huge stage, you know, your stadium rock tour moves. Yeah. I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? You're more focused on that little pocket of people. You're on a floor anyway, you know, the pocket of people around you. You know, you don't care if there's 40 or 400 as long as, the you know, 10 people in front of you are singing along. Yeah. yeah. And that makes it kind of easy. So when you strip that away, then you become that that dude that I was in his mm. mid-20s going like, oh, dude, fuck. Yeah. Like, I, I don't I don't know what to do with my hands kind of a thing. You know what I mean? What, where do I look? <laughs> <laughs> that transition is fucking weird, right? Because, like, you yeah. go from the halls and the basements where there's no stage and there's kids in your face and, like, you're giving the mic out and it's just like. Right cool as shit to all of a sudden you're on a stage and you can't reach them and they can't reach you and you have to figure out how to get that energy without it having the thing to feed the energy exactly and the the thing is that energy rory as you well know is what got you out of the basement and onto the bigger stage to begin with is your ability to connect and share that you know that love that energy that excitement with those people so i mean it's really, it's really just like an exercise, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. 
I just exercised a lot that that kind of a muscle or whatever that performance muscle and, and to be fair like I'm not like I don't like I look to my right and left and my guys are going kind of bonkers too mm -hmm. yeah. so it's it's easy it's easier to kind of let loose when everybody's kind of Loosey goosey, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. But still nailing their parts, so I don't feel weird. <laughs> you know, so. I mean, I, I've so. been lucky enough to to be backstage before a protest show and watch Rody warm up. And let me tell mm -hmm. you, he warms up his voice, but he spends most of his warm up time warming up his hip thrusts because they mm -hmm. don't come naturally to him, and he no, <laughs> he has got to really work at those hip thrusts. That's, right. That's true. So. They can get tight. They can yeah. lock up tight on you. That's the last thing you need, dude. Yeah. Is one of your hips locking up tight on a mid thrust, yeah. like you know, second second song block in, dude. You're fucked. Yeah, the birth of my son is really a miracle, man. I had to, uh, I had to warm up fucking hard. Uh, yeah. <laughs> speaking of warm ups, um, I don't think I recall you ever warming up. I, I could be wrong, and maybe I just didn't see it. I recall you going out and fucking mm. killing it. But you're one of those dudes that doesn't need to fucking warm it up, yeah? I didn't. I didn't really warm up. And I do now, but only because I get super fucking bored. Uh -huh. Like, I'm just like, I don't know what to do. Everyone's changing strings or everyone's doing whatever. Yeah. And so I like, I walk around like, kind of like, <laughs> doing that thing or whatever, you know? I'm like, uh, mama made me eat my brains, like, or whatever the fuck people do. Like, yeah. But honestly, nah, it's just, it's just. Um, Strictly you know, something to do. It's just, it's yeah, it's just something to do. I let, I let tequila and Motrin do all the work for me mostly. Yeah, and you, and the nights where you are warming up, you don't notice a difference. It's the same shit, yeah. I don't think so, no. Rory. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't know. I honestly don't. I, it might be like one of those psychosomatic things where you think, oh, you know, but I don't, I don't think so, dude. Like, I think that's fucking awesome, man. It's, it's, it's either gonna work or it's not. No. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like. <laughs> There's not a lot. It's a very base, simple machine here. I'm, more, I'm, I'm operating. You know what I mean? Like I'm jealous as hell. Yeah. Uh, you also. Well, I don't have to. Hit, I don't have to hit like the fucking castrato notes that, that you're wailing out there. So like it's a little, little easier. Speaking of castrato, <laughs> I had a man play with my best friends today. today. <laughs> we were I talking went for about a fucking that. fucking consultation for a vasectomy earlier today, and had a man oh, feel my buddy. vast ever ends between his fingers. <laughs> buddy, buddy. I went through the worst vasectomy experience recently. <laughs> recently? Yeah. Now, if it's not too much to ask, do you care sharing? Like, I've got my date. Dude. It's July 14th is when I'm getting Killer. snipped. All right. Are they doing the snip and burn? Like, the pinch and burn? Did they tell you? Yeah, they're doing the scalpel-free method. So he sticks a little hook in, pulls it out, cuts about an inch yeah. off it, and then ties it yeah. on the ends. Ties it. they got to sear it. That's the fun part because you actually are awake and you see, like, the little... Oh, like a little, a little smoke, wisp of smoke. of smoke, and you can smell it, and you can smell it. <laughs> yes. Um. Uh. Yeah, dude. Half like well, this part, this part of it, believe it or not, is the is not the worst part. Um. So as they were doing my right nut, which apparently is the tough one, uh, I was like, I'm really feeling quite a bit of pain and pressure here, like quite a bit. Yeah. Uh. And and the doctor gave me another shot of like. Anesthesia, like whatever. Mm, the local yeah. freezing. Novocaine, yeah. Novocaine for the dick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, so that second shot, uh, I found out later, uh, ended up bruising like half my cock. So my dick oh. looked like uh, like the last banana. Like, you know what I mean? Like the top part of it looked okay and the bottom part of it was all fucked. <laughs> so there was that. That was literally the least part of my problem. Oh, no. Okay. So you're not supposed to like. Uh, you're not supposed to have like sex. Obviously, you're not doing much of anything for the first couple of days, but you're not supposed to um, ejaculate. Ejaculate. Woo! Uh, for like two weeks or something. What? Right? Yeah, I know. I made it, I made it like almost ten days. That's that was a problem. <laughs> big, big problem. You should have got your palms tattooed at the same time. <laughs> Dude, it, like. <laughs> All right, listen. Okay, I'm real horny, right? There. It's <laughs> Fair it. enough. There. You know what I mean? Hey, so listen. So there I am, like day eight or nine or whatever, and like that's a long just, time. It's just it's you know I'm sitting there. <laughs> hey, I love like I love my wife, dude. I think she, she's like my best friend. Also, like I think she's smoking hot. We still fool around. You know what I mean? Mess around constantly, dude. Like awesome. I'm insatiable, right? Yeah. Um. 
Anyway, <laughs> we started messing around a little bit. I got super dirt on. She went to bed. I rubbed one out. Um, <laughs> dude, I want you to know that this orgasm was the single greatest orgasm I think I've ever experienced in my life <laughs> in regards to physical, like, like right in the moment. Dude, it, it washed over me like a tsunami of electricity from my tip of my toes through the top of my head, dude. I shit you not. Wow. And you would think, be like, well, that's totally worth whatever comes after this, right? Wrong. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not sure. I'm just real scared. (laughs) You have, like, the greatest orgasm of your life. or I had, like, one of the greatest orgasms of my entire life, right? Um. And then, you know, it, like like most, even with that, before the vasectomy, this wave of uh, regret washes over me. Oh, yeah. And I'm um, like, the oh, post no. seed clarity. <laughs> oh, boy. Maybe I could have waited. But that was pretty awesome. Maybe I could have waited, though. Dude. So, you know that you're saying they h- pull the little spaghetti noodle out, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> because, and it's really, it's like a little bit thinner than like a piece of spaghetti, right? Yeah. Um, well, that's supposed to be. Uh, well, what happens was some of that semen got stuck in the tube and was then attacked by my body as like a foreign agent. Oh, like, shit. Like it was a foreign body. And I ended up with, uh, uh, what the hell is it called? Oh, shit. I ended up with like, so instead of like a thin tube, like my shit was like a macaroni, like a cooked, like, <laughs> like a fucking number two pencil, dude. Wow. Swollen and painful, dude. <laughs> I bet. I mean, Ultra painful, dude. <laughs> and then, so that was bad, really bad. I had to get special underwear, wear them for like weeks. I was reading about those special underwear just today. Those are actually kind of cool. <laughs> they made, I like, I, I pranced around in them shits constantly. So I sent like at least two pictures of myself to Nick <laughs> while I was wearing, with like my junk circled on the photo and stuff. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, so then we, I'm like, all right, well, I got to go on tour. Now we're flying to Australia. This is like, a week and a half after my surgery, um, I'm like icing down my nuts after every show, essentially icing down my nuts and eating huge amounts of Motrin every day. Yeah. Uh, we're on like our fourth or fifth show. It's a cool little bar, cool little stage. Like, and uh, about seven songs in this dude, he was hammered during the first band, but he was having the time. He was like yeah. singing along, remembered some lyrics. But all yeah, the guy was just partying, right? Mm-hmm. Had no shirt on. Um, He's standing right in front, singing along, and then out of nowhere, just full blown, pow, just pops me. I knew that was right what was coming. Junk. What? Right in the junk, dude. God damn hey, it! I don't. I say that, like, you know, I constantly tr- try to like contain my emotions. <laughs> you know, what I mean? pain. Crying makes pain. What's it do? Right. What does it do? You know what I mean? It does nothing for your pain. Yeah. You know what I mean? It does nothing. Dude, I wanted to cry so bad. I wanted to finish the song. I literally couldn't breathe, dude. Yeah. I was doubled over. Like, I I was seeing stars, <laughs> dude. Like, dude, wow. brutal. Uh, the guys finish up the song. I'm like, yo, listen, everybody, like, I want everyone to have fun. And this isn't exactly the kind of information I'm just always putting out or whatever. But, like, I just had my fucking nuts clipped. And getting punched in the nuts yeah, <laughs> after, right. after this procedure is literally the worst thing that you can imagine. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, everyone felt bad. The dude got like just tossed or whatever. Yeah, I and fucking I, hope I spent, so. <laughs> dude spent like spent the entire rest of the night with just like hotel like you know, little bag. Yeah, ice, comes like, in the ice, yeah, like just one of those oh. constantly in. It's brutal, brutal, brutal. <laughs> Swelling eventually went away. The the constant pain eventually went away. Um, but to this day, dude, like I was like walking to the corner store to grab like like a Milky Way and some smokes or something. Yeah, and. uh Dude, like my right nut just started to like uh, give me that like someone just flicked you in the nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was all, uh, this is forever now. Really? I'm pretty sure. I talked to Chris too about it too because like the swelling went down like the tube or whatever. Mm-hmm. I love you can't see it, but I'm doing all these really. <laughs> <laughs> He's just pinching your vest <laughs> ever is. <laughs> underneath it. Yeah, yeah. So, lifted up the tube there. Uh, the tube is still kind of swole. Like there's like a little lumpy dude in there. And, uh, and I, I think I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here. I, I wish I could remember verbatim what he said, but he's like, Oh yeah. 
he he, t- he referred to it as like his his special passenger or something like that. <laughs> so, like, I can't remember how he said it. He's like, oh, yeah, my special passenger. Oh, man. Whatever. Like, yeah. surely, like, I know the United States healthcare system is kind of world-renowned as not awesome, but... Well, Massachusetts has been on top of their shit for... Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, like, like we is there the first, not we something the first you can do? state to, like, have, like... Uh, com- commonwealth comprehensive care, like Commonwealth care, they yeah. called it. So, oh, okay. you know, you like you pay fifty bucks and you can go get like a heart transplant oh, or whatever amazing. the hell you need. You know what I mean? But, but um, is there not something yeah, they can do? Free. It was free. The vasectomy so, itself, but you like I think I was reading a packet just today yeah. that was like if yeah. you have pain that lasts more than like six months, I think that was where it was. It was like come yeah. back in and there might be something we can do to fucking shore yeah, you up, remove them. Remove them. Remove them. Right. Well, I was thinking, why the hell did I just do that anyway? What the hell do I need it for anyway? That's fucking true. You like, know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah, an empty to- ball bag looks a little weird, but if your partner's cool with it, who gives a <laughs> shit? <laughs> they have prosthetics. <laughs> they have prosthetics. Did you get like, like my buddy had his had nut cancer and he has like a prosthetic nut. Oh, yeah. yeah. But I, I mean, a nutless, a nutless bag would be fucking one hell of a party trick. Maybe like, even get the <laughs> bag off, dude. You just got like, I'm dude. sure to make your dick look <laughs> <Dude>. longer. <laughs> You're just like a smooth unit. You're like, yeah. yo, I got like, I got three more inches of down dick over there. Check this out. <laughs> and I'm sure all of a sudden the notes would just go, ah! I bet. Yeah, they'd be up, dude. <laughs> Castrati! Oh, yeah. Castrati! <laughs> dude, so I noticed on the um, newest record, and I don't mean to get away from dick talk, because if there's anything I love, it's talking about no, dick. No, I think it's important. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? Sure. The guys out there, yeah. people out there, Thing understand like that's not like getting a fucking tooth pulled, man. This is serious shit. And I wish you all, I wish you tons of luck. I have friends who have had it done that had no issues. My friend Martin's one nut blew up like a grapefruit because <laughs> idiot. He like sat on it getting in and out of a truck or something like that. Oh. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, you do what they tell you and don't come, bro. Okay, <laughs> take, take it from me. Okay, I'll, but, I'm gonna man, try my damnedest. Now let's talk about music. <laughs> Uh, well, I noticed on the newest record, it seems mm. like, I mean, you still have that fucking grit. You still have that distortion that is like mm. sort of signature for you. But there are moments where you're cleaning it up a bit. There's actually a mm. lot of moments where you're singing a lot cleaner. Yeah. Um, what is that like doing that transition? Because I know like I've through personal experience, when you make a significant change in a vocal style, even for just a moment, it can be like kind of anxious or vulnerable oh uh, certainly did you oh. have any experience like that yeah i was just i like we i mean i'm sure you do it too i think everyone does it you know like sing like everyone sings at some point whether it's in your car or whatever it is like mm-hmm. and you know so like when i'm singing along to like you know prince i'm not singing like nuno yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not like, yeah, yeah. little red cor-, Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So everyone sings. Like, and maybe for, like, it's for me, you know, because I have kind of that, that timber or like that rumble that I sing in. Yeah. Uh, I doesn't mean I sing all the time like that, right? Of course. Um, And so when it came to singing, like, I remember Trevor being like, listen, dude, like, I want you to sing, like, I want your mom to listen to this song and know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Like I want your mom to be able to listen to the this song, and know word word for right. word what's going on here. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, oh, 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 okay. You know what I mean? Like, or like you'd be like, yo, do you like, you know, when you're singing karaoke and you put on like that, yee, let's go sing karaoke, boy, like or mm-hmm. whatever I do. He's like, do something like that, like. You know, he he told me to kind of explore, but I kind of knew what he was getting at, and he was trying to steer me to. Um. But yeah, as far as like feeling vulnerable, for sure, because that's all like, yo, it's like taking my armor off. You know what I exactly, mean? Exactly, like, exactly. Yeah. Now, now you're going to know that I'm flat. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you're gonna, it's going to be glaringly bad if I fuck up. You know? um, and I remember saying like, hey, we can like triple this and like throw all sorts of wet <laughs> shit on it. Right? Like, yeah, yeah, exactly yeah, that, yeah. Like that, are you? you know? Feels um, very like exposing, right? Mm-hmm. But Yeah, but at the same time, it's really fun. Like, mm-hmm. I, I really enjoy kind of like doing it and... I mean, it took forever. That part sucks. You know what I mean? Like, I wasn't immediately good at it. I'd start, you know, focusing on delivery and losing, you know, losing my timing or losing phrasing or something like that. 
sometimes, but uh, it was fun, dude. Like I, I enjoy it. I look forward to doing more of it, to be honest with yeah. you. It sounds amazing, um, and it's really cool to hear you sort of step outside of what you're known for and yeah. try something different, man. Having said that, like, I mean, like, I I love the screaming parts. Like, oh, I, of course. There were times where I'm like, yo, dude, like, hey, Trev, hey, huh? <laughs> you like you like to sing, bro. Like, you like to sing. <laughs> and there was even once, like even one of the songs where I'm like, dude, did we just like get so high that we sang each other's part? Like, yeah. Should oh, you like doing, swapped? Should I be doing this? Like, I should be doing that thing that like that fast screaming thing that you're doing, and you should be doing this like take you on a journey, paint you a picture shit that I'm like, you know, what I mean? <laughs> like what? <sighs> but. It, we're quite high a lot. So it was, <laughs> I mean, it, that, that was, that, I mean, that wasn't the case is why that that one instance happened. But there were times where I was like, "Yo, dude, like, thanks, thanks for trusting me to sing this." You know what I mean? Like, thanks for letting me, you know, coaching me into you know a, a voice that I feel good recording. That's not just full blast, Nuno. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome that you have like a buddy there, you know, that yeah. knows you so well that he knows what you're capable of and can kind of even at times, like he knows you can do it when maybe you don't think that you can. Right. You yeah. Know? Well, there are other times where I was like, yo, I think I'm doing it. He's like, you're not fucking doing it. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, Drev, I think I'm doing it. Like, you're not, dude. I'm telling you right now, you're fucking definitely not, dude. So go home and go wherever it is that you go to do this and fucking get it right and i'll be like oh, yes sir I'll, I'll see you tomorrow <laughs> like you, know I mean? you got it man <laughs> you got it i'm gonna go over dry a little bit then I'll, i'm straight to work <laughs> straight to work on that that's, that's fucking, fucking awesome that. <laughs> that's a true story <laughs> oh, i believe it you told it with such conviction it couldn't be anything true but true story. Oh, <laughs> i don't know where you go to, to practice this shit dude but go there and figure it out dude <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. amazing but yeah like you said we're like working with someone you trust like obviously is is great you know what i mean and even if it's not a band member maybe some bands go back to the same studio all the time or work with certain producers all the time and it makes total sense to me you know what i mean yeah because if you can get someone that knows you and is uh understands what you're capable of but all like really understands what you're capable of, it can take you out of your comfort zone to get you somewhere else that's that's massive that's how bands get better you know what i mean that's mm -hmm. that's what we all trying to do anyway right it's that's how you get those recordings get that you're proud of like 10 years down the line you exactly. know what i mean and not it's the ones that you kind of go i brought a recording uh, like a like a rough like a rough mix of a song to my mom's house to play it for her to see if she could <laughs> understand the lyrics <laughs> yeah. did i get there <laughs> like do you understand my mom's like a you know a 63 year old portuguese immigrant right she's probably she probably hears things with an accent you know? <laughs> i gotta think she understood the lyrics let's get the fuck 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 out of here yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like why so much it's too much it's too much Dude, we were in the car the other day uh i was with my like uh, my brother-in-law, my sister-in-law, and they were listening to like, my wife had some Taylor Swift on and I don't mm. mind that. I love Taylor Swift, sure? but she, she every now and again says fuck. And someone in the back seat, my, uh, my young sister-in-law, she said, I just love when people say fuck in music. And I went, <laughs> you do? You do? <laughs> and I immediately put on Wilhelm and went, let's get the fuck, fuck, fuck. And she's going, yeah. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean like 27 times in a row, but whatever. No, I think she was surprised, but did enjoy it. Yeah. I have a fun time playing that song live because now we take turns. Like, cause it's not like studio. It's not me going fuck, fuck, fuck. Like I just like bounce back. Like let's get the fuck, 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 mm -hmm. fuck. <laughs> like we do stuff like that all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah. Me and Trevor like bounce back and forth. <laughs> I'll alter my delivery of the word fuck. Ah, it's the little things. Oh, it's, it's the little things. It's the songs that are like older that you've done a million times that no matter how cool the part is, it's like you got to entertain yourself a little because yeah. you've done it so many times. Dude, you know? I listen back, Roy, to old songs now, dude, and I'm like, I can't believe I sang it. Like, that's how I, that's how it really goes. Because yeah. you can't, you, <laughs> you've done it so, it so many different much. ways. I've changed it so much and probably not for the better. Yeah. Just like, 
out of habit one day, I did something else because it was easier. Maybe I couldn't get the breath in for sure. That was there on the recording. So I had to do something else. And oh, that man. becomes the part. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's the song now. You know, trippy. I for sure have done that exact same thing. Like when we did like the 10 year anniversaries for our first two records and it was like yeah. listening back to those records and being like, Oh fuck, that's not how I sing that part. Right, right. I'm gonna have to yeah. fucking relearn this shit. Yeah, I feel bad. I was like, I hope no one's depending on me for like a harmony there because I'm not singing. <laughs> I'm, not any, I'm not doing any of that. Yeah. Like, like, luckily, they're not either. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah. But that's kind of like too busy. They're too busy tapping on the neck boards, mm-hmm. <laughs> fret boards. <laughs> yeah. I kind of think like that's the magic about live. Like, feels like now everybody's sort of perfect live. They sound just like their records. They sound just like their recordings. And if they don't... How do they do that? How do they make that happen? Mm, with a space <laughs> bar. <laughs> but, um, like, the magic of live is hearing the differences, yeah. right? Like, Fair I want to see people fuck up. I want to hear people right. phrase things differently. I want to hear, like... I want to see Trevor drop his guitar on the ground in the yeah. middle of the song. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've always thought... I watched it, Trevor jump and like not know what was happening because he doesn't usually do that move and then just literally like his momentum just later like he just like <laughs> fell off the side of the he's stage. trying to jump on the spot but he's just like <laughs> yeah, I think he was just hopping and then it was like the momentum's going and like oh later buddy like it's on video too actually that's fucking amazing I was like oh, then Trevor just disappears stage right dude <laughs> um can you pick your favorite Wilhelm record and also, there is a correct answer. <laughs> there is, there a, is correct a correct answer. answer. Yeah. Um, the one record I would say, like, if we had to, like, play one record for the rest of our lives, uh, the Beatles' Revolver. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> we, uh, I don't even know if there's, that's a, that's a record, it right? It is, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, sick. <laughs> um, I would guess, I guess maybe, gosh, career suicide, maybe? Yeah, that's the correct answer. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Good job. All Good right. job. See you later. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess career suicide. I don't know. They're all great, um, but that record is, at least to me, is that, super special. Like, it's just a really yeah. special record to me. That was that was that was a fun one, a really fun one to make front to back, from the music, writing it, recording it, to the artwork, to everything about it was was really fun for us. So, yeah, I guess if I had to pick one, it'd be that one. Good, and we're all in agreement. Wonderful. Yeah. Moving on. Right. Moving um, on. <laughs> if someone if someone was going to come visit your hometown, New Bedford, yeah, what is mm-hmm. like the one thing they shouldn't miss? People who aren't from there that just driving through one thing that they shouldn't miss yep. fuck i would say i oh that's that's easy easy uh stuffed quahog at uh whaler's republic quahog republic whaler's tavern there you go stuffed quahog at whaler's tavern that's on uh south first street no it's down there somewhere near the Whaling Museum, That's a f- which is also cool, which is like you can check that out, the heritage and all that. Uh, the Whaling Museum is pretty cool, uh, actually. So, yeah. And you can do both. Literally, they're across the street from each other. So And, now this, and the stuffed this quahog. Have, stuffed co- have you ever had a stuffed quahog? Like to eat? I've, yes. To, no, no, to take home as a pet. Well, I don't know. No, <laughs> I don't, never know, I don't even one. know what a quahog is. It's a big-ass clam. It's a, huge, it's a huge clam, like, a na- like the native clam. They're big. Okay. Uh, like, I mean, I'm trying to think, like, the size of a large, like, ashtray. Oh. <laughs> like a yeah. palm-sized ashtray. Yeah, so that's quite um, large. So you take, you take them, um, you have them, um, you take them out, and, like, the, the, the clam part of it is really big, and so they're kind of tough because mm-hmm. they're, they're strong, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> so you got to, so what you can't, you can't just eat them like you would, like, like, you know, steamed clams or something like that. You got to, like chop it up into smaller bits and then you mix that with like a like a breading like a Mm -hmm. bread stuffing type thing with some like like linguine like portuguese sausage or whatever and sausage or something spices and you pack all that breading and clam meat and everything back into the half shell and then bake it off so it gets a little 
crust on mm. top and you put like half a stick of butter on there. Oh, dude, forget about <laughs> it. That sounds good. I, for whatever dude, reason, I assumed it was like an oyster and you just like ate it raw and didn't chew mm-hmm. it all. Yeah. You know, I'm glad that's not the, the case. No, nah, no, nah, not at all, dude. That, that would be that would be a serious feat if you could just like throw a fucking raw cohog, dude. That would be so rude. That would be so gnarly. But uh, yeah, stuffed cohog. If you come to New Bedford, seafood, man. It's, yeah. it's what we're known for. You know what I mean? But the Wheeling Museum is pretty cool too. I, I hate that our our city was only briefly prominent, you know, uh, on the world stage because of something as shitty as whaling, but. <clears throat> it's 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 some of the stuff that came out of it like the art and stuff like you're familiar with like scrimshaw and mm-hmm. stuff like like the etching of like whale yeah. teeth and yep. bones and stuff like that like the whaling museum has like the most epic collection of like sailors like scrimshaw and stuff some of it's just incredibly dope like you, it's it's beautiful you know um so there's that uh and then yeah oh if you're into heroin we've got like tons of tons of that um <laughs> We that are. would be something <laughs> to miss. So, like, you can do better. Try to miss the uh, fentanyl laced heroin. Um, Man, I got to say, I uh, one time read a description. Of, also available across the street from the wheel. Oh, <laughs> awesome. perfect. I read a description online of what heroin felt like trying for the first time. This guy had written what it felt oh, like. And yeah. I got to say, my word, it sounds nice. Right. Is it like, oh, it feels like the warmest hug from the best mom you've ever wanted. You know <laughs> like, what? He described it similarly to how you described that orgasm, if I can be quite honest. Ooh. Like when you were talking about that, I was like, geez, I'd sure like to have Nuno's orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> if I tell that story, I want to be envious of my ball busting orgasm. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. When we hit, like, I don't know about you, I hit a certain age, dude. All things are, uh, you know, it, it's, I'm giving myself carte blanche yeah. to do whatever the fuck I want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm like, oh, Nuno, your body's riddled with some sort of disease. I'll be like, fucking A, right? <laughs> the world the is on fire. Like, yeah. roll, roll up the syringes, dude. <laughs> fire up that Nico and the Velvet Underground record. I'm about to fucking get weird. I mean, I, I, on the topic of Whaling Museum, mm. uh, I think, like, compare that and the history of that and everything uh, with the Northeast and all that, it, it makes a lot sure. of sense. Certainly. Where I live, we have a firehouse museum. Mm-hmm. It's a museum. Like the band firehouse. Yes, 100%. The band firehouse. <laughs> um, no, it's just a museum of – it's a firehouse that is a mm-hmm. museum for firehouses. What are you talking yeah, about? Sure. Firehouse, like a house that's on fire, or like one like, of those like little the, houses, like the fire station where they yeah, where like, they keep oh, the fire trucks. Keep, keep the but it's truck. not oh. about like the old fire trucks and all that. It's about the old fire house. Like it doesn't even have any of the cool stuff. It's like this it doesn't have the old cool shit. This, in it, like the this old. This building is made of brick, and it was Correct. made of brick a hundred years ago. Congratulations, <laughs> firehouse museum. So they got the house. They just didn't fill they it with any cool shit, knickknacks or whatever, the old timey shit. Like who? Yeah. Yeah, I got to think, like, good idea. Europeans are... We have are, a fire museum, too, but it's full of cool old shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Trucks and fucking poles yeah, and shit. Old, it's just tons of poles. <laughs> yeah. The I got to think the museum is just full of poles. You know what? Mm. Now I'm starting to rethink. Is the Firehouse Museum in my town really a museum, or is that just a strip club? Just, 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 just a place. It's if it isn't, house. it should be. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call it the yeah. Yeah, we'll call it the firehouse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I've got I've got a game Ooh. for us to play. I love I like these games. games. I call this game Nuno Pereira. Oh, all okay. right. Uh I'm sure you get mistaken all the time <clears throat> for Nuno mm-hmm. Betancourt. All constantly. All the time. Or uh the other famous Pereira that I know of. Uh, is hmm. Kevin Pereira the former host of G4's Attack of the Show? That's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He's yeah, that's right. He's a Canadian as well, right? Yeah, I think so. Something. Portuguese Canadians, man. Yep. Everywhere. So for each of these Our questions, manager. you have to <laughs> answer either Nuno or Pereira. Okay. Nuno or Kevin? No, or, no. Or Nuno or Pereira. Nuno, Nuno. Nor, Nuno or Pereira. Okay. So, which one's a <laughs> guitar yeah, player? Nuno or Kevin? 
Nuno. Which one's a TV host? Uh, Ferreira. Correct. I almost blew that. Which one's in the band Extreme? Nuno. Which one's a nerdy white dude? (laughs) That Nuno. (laughs) Is this a Jason Derulo song? Are you just saying your name all the time? Um, (laughs) Which one spent his childhood in Massachusetts playing hockey and football? Oh, that's got to be Ferreira. Nope. Nuno. Really? Nuno Bancourt? Wow. Wow. Oh, no Which one appeared on the political web series The Young Turks? Joe Pereira. Which one founded Atlantis Entertainment Media Production Company? Nuno. No, no. Which one hosted a TV? Uh, uh, sorry, hosted a show as a teenager called Pointless Audio. Gosh, Nuno Pereira. Yeah, damn, I was I, I knew What's it. the secret ingredient to the perfect grilled cheese sandwich? More butter. Ah, uh, you think so, you think it's not. It's mayonnaise. <laughs> it's mayonnaise. <laughs> of course, of course mayonnaise. mayonnaise. Everybody knows that. I got to say you really know your Nuno's and Pereira's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. I like I think I got like three I think you got all wrong. of them. Almost all of them right. Pretty close. Yeah, I was surprised that. I'm surprised that uh that Nuno Bancourt played football. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he like was like a super jock until like you, la- much later hey, in high in like high school when he decided to like after, start playing. Yeah, I, did you know that I? Did you hear about the time I got? I almost stole New Benton Court's tickets at Fenway Park. No, oh, I feel like I remember you telling me this, but I don't know All the right. specificity. So please, so you know, um, Massachusetts, especially Southern Massachusetts, large Portuguese population, large immigrant population in general, uh, most coastal towns, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, factory towns, right? Um, anyway, um, every year they do a soccer match, like, a, like at Fenway Park, where the Red Sox play, yep. right? Um, and so it's always like a Portuguese club team versus like an Irish club team. And they'll fly the teams over from their countries. They'll have a friendly match or whatever. And, you know, the place is full of alcoholics and degenerates and stuff. It's great. Um, so uh, I have a friend, Lalissa and I, my, my wife and I, we have a friend that has worked for the Red Sox for years. Um, and we were hanging out and she offered, she's like, hey, would you guys be interested in coming to the soccer game? Uh, at Fenway. I was like, oh, I've always wanted to see one of the soccer games at Fenway. You know what I mean? She's like, oh, sick. Like, I'll I'll put some, I'll leave some tickets for y'all at uh, Will Call or whatever. Just come up. You know what I mean? You'll be all sorted. I'm like, oh, thanks so much. I appreciate it. Day of, we drive up. You know, we get there. I go to Will Call and uh, I go, hi, like, you know, my name's uh, Nino Pereira. I have, should have some tickets here. My friend, you know, I gave him my friend's name. And they're like, uh, hold on a second. Let me just go check real quick. You know, comes back. She's like, Sorry, you say like Nuno? Like what was it? I'm like, yeah, Nuno, Nuno Perez. Like, oh, I, I think I have your tickets, but they're like they got your name wrong. <laughs> and I'm like looking, and now she literally has like an envelope. She like, yeah, like slides the envelope <laughs> over to me, right? You did and that perfectly, Nuno, by the way. <laughs> Nuno Betancourt on the, on the envelope, right, with his tickets for the game inside. Yeah, and I'm sitting here, and I'm like, dude. After all the like, you know, like Nuno Ben courts, like uh, that I had to listen to since like whenever the fuck porno graffiti came mm-hmm. out in 1990, yeah, 1990, yeah, whatever, you yeah, know? yeah. And, like for every time, oh, I had to hear that. I'm like, yo, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like boost the homie <laughs> stick. Like, if he's not here already, maybe he's not coming. You know what yeah, I mean? and like I deserve it. You know what I mean? And so anyway, I, you know, my, I'm not a bad person. So, yeah. <laughs> Cooler heads like, prevail. Oh, I'm not, this I'm not is a, another I'm not guy. A total asshole. So like, I was like, no, I'm sorry. That's, that's Nuno Betancourt, the guitar player. Yeah. And I think I even made like a silly joke. Like I'm Nuno Betancourt, the star, I'm Nuno Pereira, the singer. Or whatever. <laughs> yeah. like, or whatever. Like, no, but seriously, check my wife, check under my wife's name, please. Uh, <laughs> until they check. And, they they weren't there either, but we ended, we ended up getting. I ended up, they ended up finding my tickets, and the girl was like, "I'm so glad you didn't take those tickets <laughs> I gave you." I go, "Dude, you have no idea how bad I wanted to take that tickets. You have no idea." It's like it's so crazy. You guys have the same name. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> crazy, crazy." Yeah, no, it's fucking wild. <laughs> and you were about to give me someone else's tickets. Oh, like, man, but yeah, I almost had you know Bancourt's tickets to that soccer game. Could you imagine him walking up and be like, "I'm I'm sorry, sir, you're already inside right now." 
<laughs> and I just like totally incept him. I'm like, no, I'm yeah. Nuno. He comes yeah. up. He's like, no, what are you what? doing in my seats, dude? What, what are you doing with my tickets? Where are Nuno's? Uh, please don't. Please don't. And then like, you know, I throw up. I'm sure he was being held up by security because he probably showed up in fucking jeans and no shirt. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, probably looking too sweet. That's too, the right? look. That's the Betancourt look is those like fucking light ass denim mm-hmm. and then no Did- fucking shirt. No <laughs> shirt whatsoever, dude. At least, like, what's the over under on crucifixes? Yeah. Like, <laughs> God, I'm well, for sure. Like four. Yeah. You can kick the under at like two or three, uh, but I mean. Some around his neck and a couple around his wrists. Dude, t- dangling from his ears. There's <laughs> no, for sure. <laughs> Man, it's not he's, he's like, covered you know, in he's like a glam rocker, but he's also Portuguese. So like, just uh, like it's like you have to have one on you at all times to prove that you're Portuguese. Nah. Or <laughs> like someone just stop you, like, dude, you're not Portuguese, and you're yeah. like, I got my Vavaz, I got my Vavaz crucifix on me right here. It says otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you play hockey? Yes, beer league hockey. I, you're I goalie, hear you're a right? Goaltender. That's right. Full right goaltender like Grant Fuhr. Whew. Um Just would not even close to as good, but like still though, just like him. Okay. Just exact like same. Just exactly like him. Just like not him. really not as okay. good. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, so did, did you feel a lot of shame um, when Florida went through Boston? And this is a two-part yeah. question because I want to know Let how much ask, shame Rody well, it's felt. Gonna, now it's going to be it's going to become a three-part question because I'm going to ask you okay. a question. Like, um, have you ever been in like a serious situation where you had no control, like a car accident mm-hmm. or like uh, like a plane whose hydraulics mm-hmm. go out or like. Uh, you're say the top floor of the World Trade Center <laughs> oh, when a shit. plane crashes into it, and you're like, well. It, yes, I have really, been in that exact scenario. That, that one, <laughs> no, but airplane, no. yes. Everything up yeah. into that, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was, it's kind of like that where you're just like, you, you know what? Like the, the void, like the deep, dark void that you know is always just right around the corner that is like mm-hmm. pulling you into it as you live. Mm. Uh, you, you know, it. You know it's there. You can feel it. And sometimes, like, when you're in a weird position or, like, a really, like, trying, difficult place, like, you just kind of give in. Like, you just kind of succumb mm-hmm. and give in to the void. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? As a Boston sports fan, that's where we live, like, forever. Like, we live right on the precipice of that yeah. bottomless, dark void yeah. of despair and hopelessness. You know what I mean? When, when like... When you're there, like when you're like when you own multiple properties on that bitch, <laughs> you no you like you no longer feel those emotions the way say a normal fan would feel those emotions. Like they're like intensified and dulled at the same time. You know what I mean? Like you're going to sleep and you're like, it's okay if I don't wake up. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I know if I do, I'm going to get let down. Like, we've had our hearts broken so many times. Mm. Like, but I feel like I remember being, Boston I remember sports being, are always winning championships. Dude, yeah. But then there's like, you know, the time they crumbled, the, then they, they, you know, you're up three nothing against Philadelphia Flyers in that series uh, in, in like, what, 2014, maybe or something. I remember waking up at like five in the morning and like, outside of Prague in some shit hotel to try to get lobby Wi-Fi on my iPod touch to, <laughs> to, 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 to like watch the Bruins. Like, like check to, the to score. Like refresh enough to see the Bruins win and you can go on. And they didn't, you know what I mean? Um, you know, Aaron Boone and the Yankees against the Red Sox going all the way back to Bill Buckner and the Mets in the 86 World Series. Um, the helmet catch, uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, against the Giants in the Super Bowl, like it happens. You, you, it sucks, but what? Whatever, dude. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, fucking whatever, dude. Yeah, it's just, I think it's bad for, probably bad for sport. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm sure all the top brass in the NHL were like, yeah, Boston against any one of these big tough teams in the West is going to make. 
everybody cream in their fucking mm-hmm. jeans. Oh yeah, dude, a yeah. Boston Edmonton final. Dude, that would have been huge. Yeah. You know what I mean? Huge. I like that. Uh, I was actually really looking forward to the Vegas Boston final that oh, I had yeah. drawn up in my in the old noodle. Mm-hmm. Uh, a because you know uh, both teams are great, uh, great matchup against each other. You know, with Boston having the nuance edge and in Vegas being the more physical team, them having our old coach who you know, oh, yeah, yeah, the Butch Cassidy uh, over there. Uh, so that would have been fun. You know what I mean? Uh, I like the idea of Eichel leaving that trash fire of Buffalo <laughs> and get to a team where his talents might actually get him a cup is pretty tight. Like, yeah. I'm for that. I'm for that narrative. You I know? like that storyline a lot. Uh, me too. Like, I mean, I'm a fan first of of the sport. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. so I mean, I, granted, Florida hasn't won one yet either. But fuck Florida, dude. Yeah. Like, ugh. Uh, fuck Sam Bennett. And then they <laughs> they go through Boston. They go through Toronto. How did that make you feel, Cheese? <laughs> oh, I fucking hated it, man. You know, like <sighs> to be honest, I thought. The Boston thing was somewhat inevitable. Like they were It was almost too good to be true. Yeah. They were too good, right? Like it's yeah. just like anytime a team has had a season comparable to that, because yeah. no team has ever had a season that right. good. And the other teams that got close or, or were the ones who had the best season up until then. Yeah. Which fucking Boston and Montreal the, yeah. yeah. And they get bounced in the first or second round, right? right? right like right. historically that's how it happened. And it's like You'd that. rather just ride like a hot goaltender. You yeah. know what I mean? You'd rather be like fourth seed and have your, a hot goaltender going into the playoffs. That's prime time. That's yeah. what you need. And that's what's going on right now. Like yep. fucking yep. Bobrovsky has come back from the dead and is Can unreal. You <laughs> Yeah, I, I, unreal. Time, I'm so pissed time, off about it. Celebrate, but dude. But then also <laughs> this this kid on fucking. Like, that's something else. What he did, like to to shut down a, a team that could score at will, like the yeah. Bruins. Yeah, and the Leafs. And the Leafs. They fucking like me. bunch of games in a row where they got fucking <laughs> two goals. <laughs> I know. Like here's the fucking wonderful me. part is I'm sure you hate Toronto and I hate Boston, but yeah. we have like a communal enemy that has like just ruined the season for us. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Fuck Florida, man. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think uh, places like Florida should have hockey. Agreed. It should be against the they rules. They have too much of it. Yeah. Fuck I them. Agree. Well, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay wins, goes to three and wins two, like year after year after year. Yeah, uh, I didn't big, even get in the there. playoffs. So, oh, the Red Wings, the poor Wings, they're so dude. Yeah. crummy. Oh, they're so so bad, yeah. huh? Yeah. Someday, someday it'll come One back. Uh, they're looking better. I, I believe in uh, Stevie Y. Hey, some of the. I will say this though: Detroit has some of the best sweaters. Yeah. In any sport, any jersey, ever. Like there's that old winter classic with like that old English D, mm-hmm. like just oh like, yeah 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 Detroit D. Ah, oh, dude, that thing. Ah, oh, fuck. I wish I could wear that. <laughs> well, you can't. Well, I mean, but you guys. <laughs> I mean, the Bruins have. I mean, all the original six teams, right? The original, yeah. the original yeah. six teams have the best, the best sweaters, the best, all the best stuff. I agree. Everybody else can yep. just. Fucking go. Everyone else can suck, yeah, it. suck it. There. Um, and the Habs can fucking suck it too. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're rich. Everybody six, hates the fuck Habs. Em. And everyone can also say, say, yeah, yeah, the Habs can stay shitty for the rest yeah. of my life. I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me at all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, looking at my list, I've asked all my questions. I've asked all my questions oh, as well. Oh. No. Now we have We're this, like, um, a, like right we, at about an hour. Um, yeah. Um, so we do have a tradition uh, here. I have well, I have a couple other things. These are not. Oh. These are general things for all guests. One. Yeah. Let me ask you: is that a real keyboard over there? What? Who is me? That a real keyboard over your shoulder? Mine. Oh, oh fancy. Yeah. yeah. What do you do with that? Make music. Yeah. Did you come up with a catchy jingle for the no. show? Oh no! I uh, <laughs> the, the jingle for the show. I ripped off, I stole the MIDI from Guitar Pro from Underbite by PTH and then like slowed it down and turned it all synthy and then put it on there. So that's the theme show to the song. I didn't know what the fuck it was for a long time and then he eventually told me. All right. Sorry. Yeah, no, it's fine. Who is the most famous person in your phone? Oh, God. 
most famous person on my phone? Mm -hmm. Ah, gosh, I guess it's, I got to really think about this. Because, like, in different worlds, people are relatively famous to different... Well, I mean, so it's to you, to, right? The over, overall, like, who, who's the most... Like, overall, who's the most famous yeah. for it? Ah, oh, gosh. Oh, all I can think about is dudes and bands that no one gives a shit. Like, probably doesn't really care. <laughs> but I'm like, <laughs> yes, he's blowing up where I got last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but those uh, are bands that we care about. And so then, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess I, I mean, I pretty, I'm pretty sure I've got Bill Stevenson's number. He's, he's a good one. Yep, he's a good one. Oh, you know whose phone number I almost got, but I fucked it up. <laughs> Dude, I had such a time in Los Angeles. Holy <laughs> shit! We <laughs> long story outside. short. Uh, long story short, I ended up uh, hanging out with and kind of buddying buddying up with. Um, this dude, he's been in a he's been in a ton of movies. He's got a really funny name. He was um, he was in that movie Road Trip. Uh, he's like the really thin, tall kid. He was in. Um, was his name DJ Qualls? Yes, he was in uh, <laughs> Man in the High Tower. Oh yes, and that was the thing. Like he came up with a buddy of his was like, "Yo, we saw the show. It's really cool, man. Kick ass, man. Like come over, join us for some drinks and stuff or whatever." Holy fuck! And I'm like, oh hell yeah, man. I'm like, hey, dude. Like I knew who it was too, but I did. I was like doing the thing, like yeah, I've I mean, seen I the new right guy. Out, I wasn't gonna come right out the box with it, and I was like, "Oh, thanks so much, homie. Dap him up, rah, rah, rah. Like, yeah, man, I'll grab a beer with you guys. I'll just chat up my boys. I'll finish my grit." And I'm like, "Wait, man, dude. Hey, I know you, dude. Like, I'm a big fan of yours, dude. Like, The Man in the High Tower is like one of my favorite shows I've seen in years, dude. So I hit it with like kind of a deeper cut. I didn't come right out with like, you yeah, know yeah, I mean? road trip or like." You know, yeah. one of the other, you know, dozens of things he's been in. But, yeah. Yeah. So I was this close. I think if I, if I just put more time into, <laughs> into that, I would have, I would have had, I would have had his number in my phone. <laughs> so there's... you should have like negged him a little bit. Be like, yo, you look like one of those kids that was a horse girl or something. <laughs> Yo, my dude, you kind of look like this ugly kid I, I knew uh, from from uh, prison. <laughs> like a pickup artist. Yeah, just peacock on him. And yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we have um, a... Yeah, so I, I guess I'm going to go with Bill Stevenson. That's a good one. Yeah. That's a real good one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, there is a six degrees of Kevin Bacon situation between you and my wife. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And Kevin Bacon? No. I wish. Fuck. No. I don't have a, a hookup with Kevin Bacon. But. Fair enough. I mean, that's the thing about six degrees of Kevin Bacon is everything Everything's is connected. within six degrees. Yeah. Of so him. Nick. Of Kevin Bacon. So, yeah, there is a six degree. Nick's cousin. Nick. And your, Nick, your drummer. Nick Angelini. Yeah, his yep. cousin is friends with mm -hmm. my wife through their. Which cousin it is, you know? Boston Paula. Boston Paula? Yeah. That's funny because Nick does have relatives with the names, and I'm not making this up. Stevie Bob, um, I think there might be a Bobby Steve. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, Stevie Paul. Bob, Steve Bob for sure is one of them. So, uh, so Boston Paula. So Paula, okay. and so my wife knows Paula from their New Kids on the Block super fandom. Okay, like they're both New Kids on the Block super fans. They're on like the Reddit. Yeah, they're all Reddit. over the like yeah. all that shit. Gotcha. Um, so, like, they Fritzy's were talking trying to and, find his way to Donnie Wahlberg. Yeah. So we're trying to to get to Donnie. Is basically we're trying uh, yes. to get Donnie on the podcast, um, however we can. So we ask everybody, like, do you? Yeah, know, I don't do particularly you know Donnie care about Donnie Wahlberg, but I do think <laughs> that it would be something else if he was here. I don't know Donnie Wahlberg, but I do know where their keyboard player lives. Oh, it's like a mile and a half down the road from my house. Dude, that's like three degrees of Kevin Yeah, Bacon. right there. <laughs> We're getting Wahlberg. closer. We're getting yeah. closer. Four degrees of Donnie Wahlberg. That's right. <laughs> uh, now it's time for gifts. Oh, yeah. So we're going to give each other a gift. We'll show you the gift. Okay. And then you have to judge which gift is the better gift. Yeah. Okay. It's and a we're going to try. Rody, I'm going to try the screen share thing. That's a great I idea. I think we're going to do that. So I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to share... Uh, Come on, where are you, where are this thing? I'm gonna share this, and you guys should all see this. Okay. Okay, that that looks like uh, 
What am I looking at? So that oh, is... I, I know what that is. That I is love Wishmaster that. Bruce. <laughs> it's the Wishmaster Bruce Wayne uh, mashup. Okay. okay. I love the Wishmaster. He, he loves and the Wishmaster, and he also... Michael Keaton is the only Batman, and so... Okay. I, I, I have a hot take on that. Well, Trevor had a hot take on Val that, Kilmer's too. my Batman, dude. Val Kilmer. I'm a Val Kilmer Batman. I thought he was great. I love Val Kilmer, dude. I thought Val Kilmer was great as Batman. I like all the Batman. Keaton's great. Uh, uh, Johnny Dangerously is one of the most criminally underwatched, underrated. Why does nobody? Why do nobody know that movie? That is such a great movie. Johnny Dangerously, like everyone loves, like Airplane and like Naked Gun. Johnny Dangerously shits on those. (sighs) Well, maybe not Airplane, but like Johnny Dangerously is hands down. Like it's up there with like the Jerk. Uh, you know, <laughs> like you're super true. Like any, like just yeah. nonstop ball laugh. Yeah, for movies, me, it was like, always Johnny Dangerously. Like if we were going to do like a comedy weekend as a kid, we would get Johnny yeah. Dangerously and History of the World Part One. Oh, dude, so good. Johnny oh, Dangerously, so, so fucking fuck good. good. Elephantiasis of the nuts. Dude, fuck. get that kid. He's a fucking <laughs> fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> He gets uh, what is it? He gets deported. He gets deported to Cuba. Claims he's not from the-, <laughs> the old man who keeps getting hit on the head with the yeah, newspapers every the time. Tonight. I've been thinking of taking up smoking. This <laughs> There's so many great bits of that movie. So oh, good. dude, it's incredible. Yeah, it's dude. Great. Oh, right off the rip when the when they have like the the day and the and car the just car smashes just through it. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it's it's brilliant. It really is brilliant. That movie's yeah. great. It, it's gold. It's absolute gold. I've never seen well, it. Well, now you have you to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I where's your I Where's will. your gift? I got to stop sharing. I messaged it to oh, you. Oh, you did. So a little backstory. Um, oh, God. I've been drawing Fritzy as a uh, a ghost. I call him Spookum Fritz. Oh, I saw, I saw the tattoo. Yeah, I saw the tattoo. Yeah. I got him tattooed. And I <laughs> just every week I'm just doing more and more stuff with that character. For mm-hmm. some stupid reason. Into it. So this week, I have drawn him as a... Uh, God, the lake. He's haunted a motorcycle. As a haunted motorcycle? Is that what I'm yeah. looking at? Here, let me see if I can do a screen share. Yeah, the light, my, my right light now, is too like, much. Yeah, on a donut. I, I don't know. I, I want to see. <laughs> let me see if I can... And I'm on my phone. This sucks. I'm so sorry. Don't. That's no, fine. I'm getting on my laptop. In like a, like another hour, so <laughs> <laughs> we should we'll start over. We'll just start over from the beginning, but we have to say exactly the same things we already said yeah, in the same we order. We can just chat. Uh, we can just, chat GPT. Uh, chat. I was gonna say chatter bait. We all just jerk off while we do it instead. <laughs> but yeah, that sounds good too. Your idea is cool. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, it says it, you can't. It's share not letting it. me share my screen. Because I need to give it permission oh, somehow. Oh, your Mac won't let you do it. Listen, I don't need to see it to know that it's the better one. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe I can show it to you on my phone a little better than Fritzy. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I'm into it. You know what? You're really good at drawing hills, too. That's nice. Is that a sun in the back? Oh, yeah. A beautiful yeah. sun. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much, Nuno. I can't win. Honestly, I, I think I'm going to turn that into a children's book. I give book. up. <laughs> I'm just I give surprised up. myself this afternoon. Maybe I'm misunderstanding. Like, is the gift supposed to be like, oh, you guys each made a gift to give to like no, me or to, it's each, to each other? other. Oh, yeah. Then absolutely, yeah, yeah. Rody wins. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, he he got it. He got his gift tattooed on himself. One, I don't know how I can beat that. That's true. Well, I mean, I think I think you do. I mean, I I have some ideas. <laughs> <laughs> They're not things I would be especially proud of doing. That would be the best yeah. gift you could give me. Something that you feel deep shame. Yeah. <laughs> about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the last thing yeah. that's left to do on the podcast is See. to tell the people what they need to hear, uh, which is you, we end every episode with the guest telling the audience to eat shit and go fuck themselves. Yeah, I was going to say take a shower, but that's sick too, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you'd be like, hey, what's up? 
this is uh, Nuno from Well Scream. Go fuck yourself. Take a shower. Something yeah, like that. Something like that. But like, <laughs> <laughs> that'll work. I like 100%. that. Too. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Hey, go fuck yourself. Eat shit. Take a shower. Yeah. <laughs> you stink. <laughs> Covered in dirt. Take a shower, you shithead. <laughs> I like the improvisation oh of that. Oh my god, so good. That's fucking fantastic. <laughs>